In this video I'm gonna show you how to make these beautiful graph animations just like in Mangazi. This is a super useful skill to master because you can make these graphs in any edit, any video you can think of. We're gonna recreate this exact graph animation step by step from scratch. There are no assets needed for this project. Everything is done using the After Effects toolbar. Now without wasting any more time, let's get straight to recreating this. Hope you enjoy. Alright, so here we are in After Effects and this is the graph animation we're gonna make and if we look at this we can see the background this line this grid this line which is the actual graph coming up and this text this pretty nice match cut here pretty simple let's make it so go over to composition and make a new comp i'll call this iman graph animation and just 19 20 10 80 frame rate 30 and click ok now let's start with the background and the way we'll make a background is we'll right click and make a new solid and just call this background pg Perfect. And now let's add an effect called Four Color Gradient. You can use this plugin. You can also find them here in the effects and presets. I use the plugin, it's pretty nice, it's free also. So why not get it? And now let's go ahead and make all of these black. And you can make the first one black and then you can just take this eyedropper tool and select the previous one to make it really quick. And then let's change the first color to a dark red, some kind of red like this. Perfect. And now you can kind of zoom out and if we have the effect selected you can see these dots. And with these dots we can manipulate the amount of colors which are shown. And I'm just gonna play around with this till it looks good. Yeah, something like this is pretty nice. You can kind of copy this if you want to or you can do whatever you want. And now if we look at Iman's version here, I have it over here in new comp. He has this pretty, pretty beautiful balls going around in the background and we have to recreate these balls and these are a really really good way to add depth and you know just make the background look more livelier and better basically so let's make some balls go over to the shape tool here and hold it and select the ellipse tool so this one now you can draw an ellipse and you can hold shift so it stays in place and doesn't go like this this is not a ball this is a ball perfect and I'm gonna turn the stroke off for this first one, so you can hold Option or Alt and just click through these and it's just gonna cycle them through, that's a nice shortcut to know. Now I'm gonna make the fill black, perfect. Alright, now I'm gonna duplicate this ball, so Command D, I'm pretty sure I have it changed, but Command D is the normal shortcut. And I'm gonna take the fill off, so again hold Alt and click it off. And then for the stroke, we're gonna make it red, a dark red, kind of like this, this is nice, perfect. I'll increase the stroke to around... 20, I have to select it actually, and change it to like, maybe 20, it's probably nice. And I'm gonna apply the effect called Fast Box Blur to the stroke, so this one. You're just gonna increase the blur radius just a bit, and now you have a ball looking like this. This is nice, but we can make it better. On the original shape, so the black one, you can right click it, and you can go over to Layer Styles. And now you have a bunch of effects you can add to the thingy, but we're gonna go with this inner glow. And now this window pops up. Now we're gonna open the inner glow and here in the color we're gonna change the color to a dark red. Maybe this. Pretty nice. And now what we can do is we can increase the size and the range. We can play around with this till it looks good. Again, this is just trial and error. Use these sliders till it looks good. That's the best tip I can give you on making designs like this. Now while I'm playing around with these colors, I wanna say a quick word about Creator Syndicate, a platform run by one of the biggest names in the editing space. Inside you get full master classes on video editing and how to actually make money with it. I mean at this point there's around 100 hours of valuable training which you won't find anywhere else. Not to mention the weekly group calls where you can network, ask any questions and get feedback on your edits directly from the top creators in the game. It's exactly how I, an 18 year old kid, started making my first real money online. This is not a sponsored video, it's just my honest opinion. So check the first link in the description and I'll see you on the next group call. Alright now this is kind of what I got going on. So I increased the size a lot to around 250 and I increased the range to like 90. Looking pretty good. I also changed the stroke to be lower, not 20. All right. Something like this. And yeah, this is looking pretty nice. But again, this is just playing around, trial and error, and when it looks good, then it looks good. But yeah, let's not waste too much time on this ball. You get the point on how to make this. And I'm also gonna add a glow to the stroke, make it look a bit better, and I'll decrease the radius and the intensity, just to give a subtle glow. And also this th threshold I'll increase 
Get a nice, nice looking ball now. Isn't that a beautiful ball? It is great. Now let's pre-comp it. Select this, hold shift, select this, command shift C, and it'll pre-comp it, and we'll just make name this ball and make sure this is selected. Click OK, and we'll make it into a 3D layer. And now you can use these thingies in the screen to move it around. And let's place the first ball around here. That's nice. Now you can duplicate it by pressing Command D, and we'll place the second ball around here. And then you want to grab this Z thingy, Z, Z, whatever it is, and just kind of, oh shit, that's quick. Yeah, you're just going to push it, push it back a bit, get it looking something like this, and duplicate it again, place one ball over here, and click the Z thingy and bring it a bit forward. And you can also press S on your keyboard and scale this, scale this ball up. That's pretty nice. Duplicate it one more time, bring it down here, and again, push the Z back. So, just like this. And now the reason we push the Z position back, is if we go to the two views panel, you can see they're all on different kind of, you know, they're all kind of on a different axis. So one's right here, other one's here, then over here. And this just brings so much more depth to the image once we start making the actual camera movements. Great. Now let's make the graph. So you can press G for the pen tool and we'll make the stroke white and we'll make it three pixels. That's probably good. And now you can click here and you can hold shift and click here. You can hold shift again and click here. And the reason you hold shift is that it doesn't make a line like this. So it's always going to be straight. And now we have this, but we want the edges to kind of fade out and get smaller as it gets closer to the edge. So go ahead and open the line and go over to contents, shape one, stroke one, taper, and make the start length and end length 100. And this basically, you know, makes it thinner to the end and it also makes it, you know, smaller. So if you have this at 50, it looks like this and at 100, it looks like this. And the reason we made it 100 is we can now use these ease sliders. And if we place these two around 40 maybe, now you can see you get this beautiful effect and this makes it look better than just going with the start length and end length. These ease thingies make it look much better. But yeah, that's the line done. Now let's make the grid. So right click and make a new solid. And let's call this grid. Then, surprise surprise, we're gonna add a grid. <laughs> so this one. And now you can press S on your keyboard and we can scale it down. And we can make it, make it kind of fit the lines. So just like this. And now before I forget, let's make this 3D. So the line and the grid. Make both of them 3D. Now we have to play around with the grid effect controls so I'll make the border like two to make it thinner and now if we select the effect you can see this dot here and if we drag this dot the grid becomes smaller and that's what we want so we'll make the grid something like this that's pretty good and we'll kind of decrease the opacity just a bit and why not make the color a bit of a darker color something like this yeah that's pretty nice and now what we'll do is we'll actually scale this up get it kind of bigger than than it's supposed to be so just like this and now let's pre-compose it. So just Control shift c or Command shift c and we'll call this grid again. Make sure this is selected. Now we can make this 3D again. And the reason we made it a bit bigger is so that we can go over to the rectangle tool. So hold this as rectangle tool. And now we can make a mask like this. So kind of mask it out like this. So it's so we don't mask everything out. And then you press M three times and we increase the mask feather and now we get this feather look around the edges so the edges are not not that sharp you can kind of resize this and maybe increase it more and yeah you can again play around with these settings however much you want but this is pretty nice and it's good enough for me great now we'll make the text so command t for the type tool and just click here and write hourly wage and the font I think he uses is this Helvetica con... Yeah, yeah, this one. New condensed bold. I don't know if this is in After Effects originally. You might have to download this if you don't have it. But it doesn't really matter. You can use any font you want. And then we're gonna make this into a 3D layer as well. So here. And we'll kind of just make it fit like this. And you can also decrease this, this width thingy to make it a bit more condensed. That's nice. 
Now let's add this effect called a gradient ramp and we'll make the white color on the top. So click in this white pointer and then the black pointer can be down here to get that nice effect. Perfect. Now let's duplicate this, not the, not the gradient ramp, the whole text. So command D and we're going to bring it over here to the bottom left corner. Now we're going to type in here 2017 and now this gradient is kind of messed up. So I'll just bring the white color over here. And we're going to make the font Montserrat light. So this one. And we're going to increase this just a bit. Perfect. I will place it over here and we'll make the font size a bit smaller. Now yeah, just make the gradient ramp same we did with the other text. So the white on the top and the black on the bottom. For this one, we're going to make the black even more on top of the text to get that shadow look. Now just duplicate it and push it to the right and change the gradient ramp just like this and just type in 2025 all right now we have this basic scene pretty much set up so we can pre-compose this so it's these three texts the grid and the line pre-compose these ones let's call this grid and that's nice and now we can scale it up put it in the center and get it looking kind of like this i just noticed this gradient ramp is a bit too much minor details not that deep but yeah now let's start making the actual graph so we can select the pen tool and we'll make it red and yeah three is probably fine with the stroke and now we'll click in the corner bottom left corner and then you want to hold hold click so click and hold and drag up and you're gonna get a curved line nice and once you're satisfied let go and now we have a nice graph line and now let's play around with the line settings so open the line go to contents shape one stroke one and let's make this a uh, round cap and a round join. So these ones. And then let's open the taper again. And we're going to make the start length 100. And the start is around 40 again. It's pretty nice. And we'll actually make this line a bit thicker. Maybe even 5. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. I like it. Now we're going to draw a new line coming from right here. So the bottom left corner. And coming all the way over here outside of the grid. And this line is going to be a gradient. And you can again hold alt and click through this and get this gradient line and for this we're gonna we're gonna make the last color red so kind of like this and the first color is also gonna be red but this opacity thing so this bottom thing you're gonna click it and we're gonna decrease it to get a nice look like this and then select the right side opacity stuff and also decrease this a bit and that looks really good perfect now we can even decrease the opacity a bit more this is just supposed to be a subtle subtle line and yeah this is great now we can duplicate this so select it command d and we can bring it up over here when the line is about finished perfect now it should look like this and here we're just kind of setting up the scene we'll animate all of this later of course but let's set everything up now i'm gonna actually go to the pre-comp so this grid pre-comp we made over here and i'll control c on this hourly wage text and I'll bring it over here just by duplicating it. Also, before we forget, make everything 3D. So just like this. And yeah, now we have this text. And I'll bring it down here. So as you type in 50 to to $100, we can bring the white end of the ramp over here to make it easier to see. And then we can again play around with this font settings a bit. A bit more condensed, just like this. I'll increase the size just a bit. Great. And we'll place this right here on the edge of the edge of the grid and make the black black point on the bottom and the white point on top just like this and we actually have to select the line and make sure it fits the whole thing so you can press g for the pen tool and you can hold this and hold shift and just bring it just like this perfect now we can duplicate this text bring it up 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 and write eighteen thousand dollars that's nice then again change the gradient ramp points just like this and we have to make this line a bit longer. So G again and hold shift and drag it over. Beautiful. Now our scene is pretty much set up. Now we'll animate everything. So we'll start off with this grid pre-comp. And it's pretty simple. So go ahead and press T on your keyboard for opacity. Make our opacity frame. Push it like half a second forward and make it zero. Yeah, that's kind of how the grid was animated. You can easily use this by clicking F9, selecting them in F9. Yeah, that's done. Now for the lines, so when it appears, we'll make this first line, so the actual graph, open it, click add, and add a 
trim paths, open the trim paths and make the end keyframe, push it a bit forward like a second, make it zero and then let's select them, press F9 to easy ease them, go to the, go to the graph editor here, select them and pull this to around 70 and around 70, that's pretty nice. And that looks awesome. Now what I'll do is I'll just copy these keyframes. So select them, Control C, Control V, and Control V on the other shape layers. And boom, everything animated. Beautiful. Now for this text on the bottom right, just press T on your keyboard over here. And push it a bit forward and make it zero. And easy is this, kind of adjust them. And that's nice. Now you can check this preview time thing here, so we're at zero right at the start. We're gonna go to around two seconds, and that's when we actually want the second line to appear. So press U to see the keyframes, and kind of pull them around here, it's probably good. And yeah, now it's delayed, it doesn't start at the same time, which we obviously don't want. And then I'll copy the opacity keyframes from the bottom text, and paste them to the top text when the line is about to hit it, so just like this. Great, now let's get to the camera stuff. So right click and make a new camera and make a one node camera. This can be 50, perfect, click OK. And now let's make a new null object and we're gonna make the null object 3D and we're gonna parent the camera to it. So this pickwick thing, parent it to the null object. And I'll show you in a second why we're doing this. But yeah, open the null object and press P and go to around four seconds, which is kind of the end of this animation and just make it zoom in like this perfect and the gradient ramp is kind of missing up here now we have this subtle subtle zoom in going on now we're gonna kind of go over the top line starts appearing so right here you can see it appears and we're gonna cut this camera so i think it's command shift d the original preset i have it changed but yeah just cut the camera press p for position zoom it in so the last one crease it and go up and go to the right, kind of like this. Just zoom it into the right. I'll make it a bit delayed so I can drag it over here and drag this camera. That's beautiful. Now we have to change the gradient ramp because we're kind of playing around with the positions. But yeah, let's change it like this. I'll make the zoom a bit less. Yeah, there we have a really nice match cut done pretty easily. Awesome, now let's add some finishing touches, which is first off, I'm seeing that this line needs some glow. So I'll add a glow and I'll try to make it look good. Yeah, so I just put on a glow and I adjusted the settings like this and I duplicated the glow to give it some more effect. So you can copy these settings if you want. I'll duplicate it maybe, maybe one more time and I'll decrease the radius and the threshold and the in intensity a bit. Yeah, that's that's enough glow. Now I'll just copy one of these glows and I'll paste them on the other line thingies which we made. I'll kind of decrease the opacity on these. So select both of them. And yeah, make the opacity like 50. We're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna make a new adjustment layer and we're gonna add a posterize time. So the laggy thing which Mon uses and we'll make this 16. Now that's a really good looking animation. That's a beautiful graph. Hey guys, this is me from the future. Now I completely missed that in the Mons version, the balls are kind of moving around, jiggling all over. And yeah, I completely missed that, but I'll quickly show you how to do that. So you can go ahead and select one of the balls and add the wiggle, the wiggle effect. So this wiggle position, you can see it's already wiggling around and then you can just kind of play around with these settings. For example, make this like 0 0.5 and make this like 25 to make it a bit slower of a wiggle. And then if we play this back, you can see the balls. The ball is wiggling around nicely. You might wanna increase this, just kind of play around with this again. And yeah, that's pretty nice. Make a control C, both these effects and paste them to every single ball. And that's, now they're wiggling a lot, but yeah, just play around with the settings so they're not wiggling too much. Maybe 0 0.5 for this is nice. And also one more thing, we might as well add a vignette to the adjustment layer to give this nice look. I also forgot about that, but there we go, back to the video. I'm sure you guys are gonna get some pretty happy clients with this. 
this kind of editing. But yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, more re-edits and more tutorials like this. Go ahead and check out this video for more. See you guys in the next one. Take care.